Climate Now, in collaboration with Copernicus. Hello and welcome to Climate Now, our unique monthly update on what's really happening to our planet. Later in our report, we ask, can farmers manage to adapt to climate change? We can't work in the same way. It's pretty upsetting that our animals can't drink naturally in the fields anymore. But first, the latest data from the Copernicus Climate Change Service. On a global scale, we can say that it was the warmest month of May on record, with temperatures 0.6 degrees Celsius above the 1981 to 2010 average. Now, that is the headline figure. If we dig into some of the detail, we can see there was a great deal of variability. Up here, we can see this blue area, meaning there were colder than average temperatures from Scandinavia down to the Black Sea because of a persistent flow of cooler air from the northwest. One of the other big trends over the past few months are warmer temperatures in Siberia. We can see up here, they had temperatures up to 10 degrees warmer last month. Over here in Australia, in parts of Brazil and Canada, it was cooler than average. And then everywhere else here in red and pink on the map was warmer than average last month. Now, I wanted to show you a key trend that we've identified this springtime, which is that it has been drier than average across large parts of Europe. Have a look at these two maps showing soil moisture and precipitation anomaly. There's this large red band here indicating that the top layer of soil is drier than average and the level of rainfall is lower than average too. And that brings us to the focus of our report, agriculture. We wanted to see how farmers in Europe are coping with the challenge of climate change. We know that they'll have rising temperatures and also an increased risk of prolonged drought. So are they able to cope or is the change just coming too fast? I went to a farm in the Ardèche region of France to find out more. It's time to take out the animals on La Ferme de la Mélie. Aurélien Mourier has worked this land for 15 years and his family's been here since 1880. He's concerned about one of the key trends of climate change, more frequent and longer droughts. The biggest change in the last few years is really the successive droughts. We suffered serious droughts the last three years, and we've already had a drought this spring, meaning a huge drop in the production of forage. Aurélien's farm used to produce enough forage to be self-sufficient, but now he has the extra burden of buying forage from late spring onwards. For water, it's the same story. This is a field where there was a spring and a stream. Today the stream hardly ever flows all year. The spring has dried up, so we have to supply the cows with this cistern. Scarcity of water, rising temperatures and increasing lack of certainty are issues many farmers face now. Meanwhile, they have to keep producing food and cut their own greenhouse gas emissions. Many sectors are working to adapt to the risks, but it's probably not enough, according to scientist Patrick Bertuzzi. Overall, if we look at the changes in practices at the moment, we see tactical adaptations. That's to say, we try to modify our practices without changing the agricultural systems. Those changes just don't go far enough, he says, and a fundamental overhaul is inevitable. Depending on the evolution of climate change, and in particular if we stay on a business-as-usual scenario and don't limit emissions, then by 2070 to the end of the century, we'll have a complete change in the agricultural system and even in the countryside. Back on the farm, Aurélien Mourier is doing what he can. He's reducing his herd of cows because they need so much water, and he plans to plant grapevines to diversify his production. We have to adapt to huge changes. We see it every day. The seasons aren't the same anymore. The patterns of rainfall and heat are so different, and we're forced to fundamentally change our way of working. You can read more about farming, agriculture and climate change and see all the data presented in this programme on our website, euronews.com slash climate now. And I'll see you next time. Climate Now, in collaboration with Copernicus.